I've owned this 2016 Mercedes S550 for the last 20,000 miles. It's been incredibly fun to drive, the ultimate comfortable daily driver, and bulletproof reliable. I've done a lot of things in the S-Class over the past 20,000 miles, so I thought I'd share my experience. I took delivery of the car during the middle of a massive snowstorm in January 2016. I was at a party in downtown Detroit. I drove my M5 there, which was rear wheel drive and needless to say, not the best vehicle for the snow. It took a while for them to clean the car up, but the dealership graciously drove it all the way to downtown Detroit, dropped the car off and let me drive it home. I was instantly blown away by how capable the S550 4Matic was in the snow and just how isolated the interior was from the treacherous conditions on the outside. More on the snow stuff later. My experience with the S550 actually started a few months prior when I reviewed one in California. A direct quote from the review was, I haven't lusted after a car like this in such a long time. In fact, the only problem I have with the Mercedes S550 is that at the end of the review, I have to give it back. I want one. Well, thankfully enough, I was blessed a couple months later to be able to buy one. Okay, for those who want to get extremely technical, I did not buy this car, I lease it. 12,000 miles a year, 120K MSRP, comes out to $1,450 a month, which is a lot of money, but compared to a Tesla Model S, it's actually cheaper. It is, however, more expensive than a similarly equipped BMW 7 Series and a Jaguar XJL. So what possessed me to get this car? In the words of my dad, why did you get an old man's car? Now, that's true. The average age of an S-Class owner probably is quite a bit older than I was 21 when I got this car. Well, let's start off with my needs. So at the time, I had a rear-wheel drive BMW M5 E39, and I had a muffler delete Lamborghini Gallardo, a really loud raw car and a manual rear-wheel drive car horrible for Michigan winters. So I needed something that was all wheel drive. I also wanted something that was very comfortable, that was isolated from the environment. Mercedes S-Class seemed to fit that bill. After reviewing one, I instantly fell in love with it and I started looking at other cars in the category. There is of course the XJL, the Tesla Model S P90D, and the BMW 7 Series. The 7 Series never really did it for me. I don't really like the interior as much as the S-Class, nor do I like the exterior. The XJL was appealing because of the price difference. The lease deals on those were way, way cheaper than the Mercedes S-Class. The Model S, obviously appealing for many reasons. A lot faster than the S-Class, it's all electric, it's better for the environment. The downsides were the lease prices for a car of similar MSRP to the S-Class were astronomically different. $2,300 a month for a P90D loan. Then you factor in, I was in college, I was in an apartment, they didn't have charging stations, so there was no place to charge it. And in Michigan, a place that doesn't really like Teslas for whatever reason, charging it on the go would be more difficult as well. But the biggest reason why I chose this S-Class was the absolutely stunning interior. With over 300 LEDs in the interior, plush leather seats, and an incredibly soothing driving experience, I was sold on the car. The focal point of the interior, of course, is the dual 12.3 inch screens. Of course, you have a larger center screen for the Tesla, but something about the way these were laid out and flow into the center dash area really piqued my interest. Now in this review, I'm gonna attempt to talk about the key features of the S-Class that they promote, that I use, and the ones that they promote that I don't use and that are kind of useless. The 12.3 inch screens are one of those that of course you use every day. The graphics are beautiful. All of the animations, they spent so much time getting this just right. It's also incredibly easy to use. The only difficult aspect of the infotainment system and the screens is the air conditioning. For whatever reason, to access the climate control settings on the screen, you click a button labeled menu. There's got no other indication that it has anything to do with the air conditioning other than the fact that it is called menu. That brings up the temperature, you can change where the air is distributed, and you also have air ionization and air purification. The ionization, I have it on all the time. Honestly, I don't think it does much whatsoever, but the purification and the air fragrance, I use quite a bit. The air freshener, I turn on all the time. It makes the cabin smell very nice, and it comes in an interesting cologne-style jar in the glove compartment. I've got free side mood. I feel so free right now. 
Let's go over some of the features that I don't use and then go over the ones that I use every day. The first is voice amplification. If you have a driver and you wanna communicate with them and you're in the back seats or you're driving and you just wanna to talk to your friends, the voice amplification system helps with that. Now, I'm paying attention to the road. I'm facing forward and I'm talking forward. I'm not gonna communicate with my passenger by going like this. So clearly my voice is gonna be muffled because I'm talking in the completely wrong direction. Well, Mercedes has figured that out. They have a microphone that captures my voice and then it plays it through the rear speakers when the voice amplification is on so that the passengers in the back can hear it better. The issue is it sounds very robotic and electronic and echoey so much so that it is honestly completely useless so I never use it. If you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed what you see so far hit that subscribe button turn the notification bell on and join the fastest growing car community on YouTube. The massaging seats is a feature that I use and also don't use. Predominantly, I use it when somebody who's never been in my car gets in, and I wanna show off the fact that it has massaging seats. There's six different settings from activating massage, classic massage, mobilizing massage, hot stone rock massage, active workout. But my biggest gripe is, they don't do all that much. Now it's a catch 22. If you make the massage setting really, really intense so that you can feel it, it's going to wear out this beautiful leather really, really quickly. But if it's not intense enough, then what's the point? I can barely feel it when I turn it on. Yes, there's different settings for intensity. I have it all the way maxed out and I pretty much have to press myself back into the seat, which defeats the point of having a relaxing massage in order to feel it actually touching my back. It basically is just some random things moving around there that I guess is a little bit exciting the first few times and then after that, there's really not that much of a point. Everyone who rides in the car thinks it's hilarious and loves it, but once you own the car for a while, it's a little bit more of a gimmick. That's part of the reason why in the E63 AMG that I just ordered, I got the performance seats which don't come with the availability of massaging seats because I don't really need them and I don't plan on using them. That being said, if I've been stuck in traffic for a long time, I'm stressed out, I will turn it on just to make some sort of a difference. It also helps with making sure you don't fall asleep at the wheel if you've been driving for a very long time because, well, it's got some movement on your back. The parallel parking feature is also something I rarely use. Now, it works. It works really well. The issue is it likes to get your wheels way too close to the curb. Sometimes it uses the wheel itself and the tire as kind of a marker when it's backing up. The issue is I have lower profile tires now on Vorsteiner wheels that look so much better than the standard 19s that I had on the sport package variant of the S550. I don't wanna curb them. It's not worth using a tricksy feature that backs up, scratches the hell out of the wheels, but oh yay, it parked itself. I usually just parallel park myself. I have a video on how to do that, so if you don't know how to parallel park, it really isn't all that tricky if you know the step. Wi-Fi was something I was super excited about as a feature of the S-Class, until I found out how much it costs. For a $120,000 car, you'd think, why don't you just throw in Wi-Fi service for free? But unfortunately, you have to get Embrace, and then you have to get the Embrace Entertainment to get Wi-Fi. Now, it's not an astronomical price. It's $28 a month, but that is an extra expense, and it's 28 packs of M&M, so right there I kind of decided that I no longer needed it. Although Wi-Fi is nice, especially if I'm out filming at a remote location, I have no cell service, I need to look something up, having Wi-Fi is great connecting to your laptop and sitting in basically a mobile office. On to the features that I use every single day and that make this car so special. Active Lane Keep Assist and Active Cruise Control, AKA Distronic Plus. I use this every day and it makes the driving experience of the S-Class all that much better. You turn it on by pulling back on the stock right below the turning indicator. Right now, Distronic Plus is set to 45 miles an hour, which is the speed limit. It's able to guide itself in the lines and now I'm not hitting the brakes whatsoever, slow the car down to a complete stop when you're in traffic. If you're going under 25 miles an hour, it's able to actually steer itself with the car in front of you. If it decides to go around a sharp bend, it can do that as well. Honestly, the self-driving feature is about as good as it gets. It's in the range of the Tesla Model S. The only thing it does that slightly frustrates me is every 10 seconds, you do have to put your hands on the steering wheel. But if you give it a little bit of a nudge, it kicks back into normal Distronic Plus and drives itself all the while. This was extremely vital and so nice to have when I drove all the way from Michigan to California. And honestly, when I sit in traffic every day, going to location for car reviews and random vlogs, I use Distronic Plus 
and it makes it such a nice experience. Another feature I use all the time and passengers love as well is the automatic side bolsters. When I go around a turn, the opposite side bolster inflates to keep you in the middle of the seat. It's those little tiny features that Mercedes adds that come together into such an amazing package. Honestly, the first time somebody gets in this car and I go around a turn and the bolster inflates, they go, oh my God. Now it's not a new feature. They had this on the E60 BMW M5, but still, it's a nice touch. The S550 comes standard with a Burmester audio system. I listen to music every day. It's not like the S550 has a beautiful exhaust note, although when I straight piped it, it certainly was interesting. But there is an upgrade. The Burmester high-end audio system comes with 24 speakers and 1,540 watts of auditory bliss. But more important than that are the illuminating rotating tweeters that come out of the A-pillars as you turn the car on. There's also an incredible aluminum speaker in the center here and extra speakers throughout that look so, so nice. Now, is it worth it? Well, on the E63, I've decided to opt for that package. I didn't originally think it was, the standard Burmester audio system is absolutely incredible. For somebody who's used to a normal car sound system, this sounds like about as high end as it possibly can get. The scary part is it actually does get better, but for a standard system, Burmester, oof, they killed it. Let's go over some of the performance figures of the car, shall we? Under the hood is a 4.7 liter twin turbocharged V8 making 449 horsepower and 516 pound feet of torque. Despite the fact that it weighs 4,700 pounds, which hilariously enough is about the same as a Hellcat, it's able to do zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds, which for a car of this mass and the purpose, a chauffeur driven vehicle or something that's incredibly comfortable on the way to your work, 4.7 seconds is plenty fast. And it's got brilliant traction off the line thanks to its all-wheel drive system. Now there's two settings for the transmission as well as the throttle response. We can put it in sport here. I rarely do that, but if I'm driving on back roads, it's nice to have that little extra throttle response and the ability to drop down gears when you touch on the throttle pedal just a little bit. Now it has two-way adjustable dampers, sport and comfort. I'm almost always on comfort mode because, well, it's a comfortable car. But on back roads, yet again, if you put it into sport mode, it lessens body roll a lot and with the right tires not the all seasons that it came with i'm now running michelin pilot sport 4s's the amount of grip is staggering and it's able to hang with a lot faster cars than you would believe it would now i've completely shredded the brake pads i've got to get the brake pads fixed because of the aggressive driving i'm pretty sure i've driven this car more aggressively than any other s-class owner out there if somebody else has driven their s-class more aggressively let me know i'd like to meet up with you there are paddles mounted behind the steering wheel they're pretty much useless as the response time is slow at best. Now I've gotten my best zero to 60 times by putting it into manual one so that the car launches from first gear instead of its standard second gear, but after that it automatically upshifts on its own. The rest of the controls on the steering wheel are easy to use. Some people think the steering wheel looks like a clown face. Maybe that's why they redesigned it on the new generation of the S-Class. Not the new generation, but the refresh, so to speak. I actually love the way it looks and I love the little touches like the hand stitching on the airbag and the nice wood trim on the top and bottom with some aluminum accents and leather where you actually grip the wheel. We've got a home button to bring up all the features in the center screen here. You can access your fuel economy, how many miles you've driven. You can even switch the speedo to kilometers if you wanted to do that for whatever reason. Finding the traction control offsetting is a seriously daunting task. It's a labyrinth maze kind of thing that took me a long time to figure out. I actually found it out thanks to a subscriber. So special thanks to that subscriber for helping me figure out how to turn traction control off in this car. Now with traction control off, because of this all wheel drive system, you actually can't really brake traction on purpose in the dry or even in the wet. It really takes a snowy or icy surface to start spinning this car around to do donuts, burnouts, stuff like that. However, when you are in the snow, this thing handles incredibly well. With traction control on, I was able to go through feet of fresh powder snow with no problem at all. Even in icy conditions, the car was very stable. I mean, obviously not on ridiculous off-road that might require a truck or a Jeep or something of that nature, but even three feet of snow on a normal road, 
this car is able to plow right through it. Now with traction control off, you're able to pull the most beautiful all-wheel drive burnouts. That extra power of having the front wheels allows you to slide it in such a pretty manner. I've drifted this thing a ton of times in the snow and it is a downright blast. More fun than any rear wheel drive car I've ever driven. I even lapped this car around a racetrack in the snow and it was able to do pretty well. The only limiting factors really is the braking, but that's the same with any car. You basically need studded tires for that. The back seat of the S-Class is likely the best place to be. We've got two sunroofs, one here and one over there, as well as controllable shades for both sides. I can even control the shade for the other side, but my GoPro's there, so I'd rather not smash into it. We've got a rear shade back here, but this is as base as it gets for the rear of the vehicle. I could have reclining seats, massaging seats, heated and cooled seats. There's also an option for a large center console here. So you have two captain's chairs that looks absolutely brilliant. Tray tables come up, so it's a full working station. Now that's more for people who wanna be chauffeured around the reason I didn't get all that stuff is I didn't think I'd be in the rear of the car all that much. Turns out I was right and I saved a bunch of money by not getting the rear seat entertainment package. Do I wish I had it sometimes? Absolutely. It'd be nice to have cool screens and it'd be nice to entertain people in the back, but not a necessary option. Unless you've ridden in a Phantom or a Maybach, the rear legroom will absolutely blow you away. No matter how tall you are, I haven't had a single person sit in the car, and I've had people sit in the car that are six foot six, six foot seven, say, ah, there's not really all that much leg room back here. You have plenty, even if you are a basketball player. All right, let's hop back in the front, shall we? So what have I done in the S-Class over the last 20,000 miles? Well, some of which I can't say, but I've taken it to the drag strip. I ran a 13.1 second quarter mile. I've taken it on a snowy racetrack. I've driven it entirely across the country from Michigan to California. I've driven it on incredible back roads in the Malibu canyons, and I've driven it in lots and lots and lots of traffic. When I moved from Michigan to California, I thought, screw flying, why don't I take an incredible journey across the country in the S-Class? It's got Distronic Plus, it has massaging seats, it's comfortable, why don't I try that? The journey was amazing. I took a friend with me, he's got a YouTube channel, Life with Ty, and we had a downright blast. And part of the reason why we survived the 35 hour drive was because the S-Class was so comfortable and because of that Distronic Plus, you just pull back and Take your hands off the wheel and cruise. So has anything gone wrong? Something has to have gone wrong in 20,000 miles, right? Well, if I had made this video a couple weeks ago, I would have said no. So let's go over that. I got maintenance included in my lease. So other than taking it in at 10,000 miles and I'm about to take it in for 20,000 miles, the oil change included in my lease, I have done absolutely nothing to the car and nothing has gone wrong. This has been the most reliable vehicle I have ever owned. I just chewed through the brake pads. I need to get those fixed before I eat through the rotors like I did on my other car. What a mistake that was. But they lasted well, 20,000 miles of insanely aggressive driving. These will last you a lot longer than that, I promise. Chances of you tracking and abusing an S550 are probably pretty low. But if you do, you are a champion. Other things that have gone wrong in the last month. Well, the cooled seats on the driver's side, unfortunately, no longer work. There's little fans inside the seats. I think the fans have broken in the upper portion because the lower portion works. It still cools my butt, but it doesn't cool my back. Got to get that fixed. There's also a light that pops up that says airbag warning. So far, it hasn't done anything uh, too sketchy, although I haven't crashed, knock on wood, thank God. But I'm gonna get that fixed as well when I take it in for service. However, other than that, no little electronic issues, no hiccups, nothing. It has been incredibly reliable and dependable to drive every single day. So with that, I love this S550 more than I ever would have imagined. The amount of experiences and trips that I've been able to do because of this car have been unbelievable and worth it in itself. It's the most comfortable car I've ever owned. It's isolation from the exterior environment is a remarkable feat. To Mercedes-Benz, I just wanted to say thank you for creating such an incredible vehicle. This is not a paid promotion. In fact, I don't really know anyone at Mercedes-Benz corporate whatsoever. I should probably change that, but they did such a good job with this car. I feel like I need to share it with the world. I'm gonna be sad when I get rid of this car. Once I take delivery of the E63 AMG, I'm going to be getting rid of this. It's been an amazing, amazing experience owning this vehicle. If you're on the fence about owning an S-Class, do it. It's an incredible vehicle. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video. Bye.